the skies above are clear. So let's tell the world about his love. Happy days, happy nights, happy days are here again. Good evening, I'm William Pace. Thanks so much for tuning in the show tonight. My guest this evening is Gary Lysel, former mayor of Dayton, and maybe future mayor of Dayton too. Thank you so much for being on the program tonight. Thanks for having me back. It's You're, a pleasure. Right. You, you bet, you bet. There's so many people uh, throwing their hat into the arena for city commission, for uh, city commission as well as mayor. But I'm interested to know, want to know, what made you decide to throw your hat into the arena this time? Well, uh, I did it as a matter of principle. Uh, I did not want to see another mayoral race where the uh, incumbent was uh, unopposed. And so I turned in my petitions uh, as early as December 3rd, and they were, I guess, uh, checked and verified. And uh, then by the end of December, the current mayor decided she wasn't going to run for a third term. Mm -hmm. So at which point it created an opportunity for uh, a certain political party to appoint their chosen candidate and it also created an opportunity for a lot of people to throw their hat in the ring and I think there were like seven people that pulled petitions but only one other person got on the ballot. So yes, it is a contested primary on May 4th. Well, I'm hearing that there are many concerns in Dayton. Um, many people have concerns about the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Many people have concern about uh, safety in the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. What would you do to make the neighborhoods um, more safe, secure, and to put people at, at ease? Well, um, one of the things I do realize, there are 65 neighborhoods in the city of Dayton, and about only half of them have uh, viable or um, active neighborhood associations. And I've noticed over the years that those neighborhoods that have active neighborhood associations fare better with uh, community events and, and activity than those that don't. And we have a neighborhood leadership institute that we, we do every year at the city of Dayton where we take people from the community, we teach them about the history of Dayton and the neighborhoods, and when they get out of that graduation class, they're excited to do stuff, and then there's nothing for them to do. The city doesn't give them any, any uh, ideas on, on how to take that knowledge and benefit the city with it. <clears throat> so one of the things I'd like to see happen is the Neighborhood Leadership Institute graduates and the alumni go out into these neighborhoods where there are no neighborhood associations and they can go out and talk to the super voters, the voter lists, the walking lists, mm -hmm. knock on the door and say, hey, we want to create a neighborhood association for you. We're having a meeting on this date at this time at this park or, or this, this church or this hall. Um, come together and the plan is in three months you are going to have a charter, bylaws, and you're going to elect your leaders for your neighborhood association and then for the next nine months or so we're going to help you do stuff, organize community events, cleanups and things like that to get them going and started so that they can roll on their own. Another thing in terms of community policing, and I've had several discussions with your next guest about this, is it wouldn't hurt for officers to knock on the doors of those same super voters. Wow. And introduce themselves mm -hmm. as the beat cop because these are the concerned good citizens that want to help, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and those voter registration lists are going to be paramount in making changes in Dayton because there are, um, I mean, these are literally the, the good citizens of the city. And we're noticing as we're, as we're campaigning. Um, I can see wh why that would help build stronger neighborhoods because if there's currently no leadership in the neighborhood, that would be like a bridge mm -hmm. to City Hall. Correct. And, and the way to, to tackle it is to go to those people who vote in every election because mm -hmm. they are concerned citizens and they are doing their civic duty. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the things that I'm really interested in in Dayton because I I'm lived in this community grew up in this community, uh, and I remember that every thoroughfare used to have all kinds of merchants on it. Mm -hmm. 
you know, you name it, dry cleaners, uh, uh, mom and pop restaurant, little small stores, novelty stores, hair salons and so forth. What can we do to foster more entrepreneurs in this city? Well, I, th I think it goes back to the education system. For too long, we have focused on test scores and getting kids to go to college, and now we're having a problem with the vocational uh, things like uh, carpenters, uh, bricklayers, stonemasons, uh, plumbers, electricians, and things like that. There's, and, and, and even farmers, in reality, I think the average age of a farmer in Ohio now is probably about 60. And so we need to f stop focusing on test scores and focus on creating responsible members of society. Um, and I think, you know, by the time a child's about 14 years old, you're gonna, you, teachers know if they're gonna graduate or not. So you need to redirect their attention to something that they're interested in, even if it's auto mechanics or motorcycles, electronics, wh whatever, um, and steer them in that. And I think one of the discussions we have to have as leaders is, is to talk to the, the local unions about doing apprenticeships mm. more and sponsoring these kids at a young age to get their interest. I, I, I remember as a young boy growing up in England, at the age of 14 or 15, I did a boot camp with the British Army for a week. Mm. And it taught me that I didn't want to join the Army. <laughs> <laughs> but several of the kids that were there did. I mean, mm -hmm. and so uh, things like that we, we ought to try doing with these, with these uh, students to see if there's an interest so that we can direct their lives where they can be productive members of society. So in other words, starting trades maybe in high school? Correct. Mm -hmm. And cultivating this idea and starting that entrepreneurial uh, spirit early on so that eventually those seeds that are, are planted mm -hmm. would flourish into businesses. Here. Correct. You know, my wife worked for Key Bank for 28 years and she, she actually said to me if she, if she could do it again she'd have taken a, a, a she'd have done a, become an electrician. They make like $65 an hour. It's an honorable profession. Right, right. She said if I could have done it again I would have become an electrician. I wouldn't have worked for the bank. I would have gone on and, and done this and had my own business and been very successful doing it. And so I think that's a message that we need to send these young children. You don't have to go to college. Right. You, you, can, you can have a viable business making more money than those people that did go to college and be successful. More with Gary Lysel, candidate for Dayton City Commission, when we return. Stay with us. The William Pace Show through the years has been a beacon of light to the Miami Valley and beyond, taking you to such destinations as the Navy Pier, Palmer Hilton Palace Hotel, German Village, Showboat Majestic Theater, Ohio Village, and Crone Conservatory. There is always something cooking in the kitchen mm, on the William Pace Show. Some of the biggest stars and entertainers like B.B. King, Jimmy Walker, Bob Carlyle, Patty Austin, and Mr. T have appeared on The William Pace Show. Tune in The William Pace Show on CATV. Good evening, I'm William Pace. Thanks so much for tuning us in tonight. My guest this evening is Gary Lysel, candidate for mayor of Dayton. Thanks for being on the program tonight. We were talking before about entrepreneurs and so forth, but is it possible that if we do a good job in building entrepreneurs, that Dayton could be like a world stage. When I was mayor the first time for the four years, I always described Dayton as a world-class city, and I, and I did it for a reason. If, if, if I keep putting that message out, people will believe it, and it, mm -hmm. it will happen. And it did attract a lot of people here from other parts of the country. And I think we, that's something we need to do. I'm a transplant from, from Pittsburgh, um, and I see Dayton as, as there's nowhere greener, you know, and so, and I hear that from a lot of people who come here from other places, uh, whereas people who have lived here all their lives have a different view. And so um, I, we just have to work on that, I guess, mm -hmm. I guess and, and just say D Dayton is a world-class city. Mm -hmm. Well, in many ways it is because of the Wright brothers, mm -hmm. in many ways because of Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been many, um, uh, inventions here. Absolutely, right. And so in many ways it has a lot um, to offer to people. Mm -hmm. In fact, you know, when I used to do the road concerts and so forth, and um, at, at the end of the concert I would always say before my encore, um, 
I'm from Dayton, Ohio, the home of aviation and Paul Lawrence Dunbar. There you go. You know, so I always give the city a good plug when I'm on the road. There are some changes coming to the city charter. Correct. There would are, you like to talk about that? Yes, I would, because it's very important that people go out and vote on this. There are six changes to the charter that the city has put on the ballot. Um, if you go to gogarygo.com, which is my website, and up in the top it says my blog, and click on that, I've actually documented it and put pictures up of, of the language, because the ballot language does not reflect the ordinance language. The, there are two. The first two I'm, I'm telling people they need to vote no on. One is it defines the position of the mayor, which the mayor already does. It. In my opinion, it's an unnecessary charter change uh, that is obsolete, really. Um, and the second one actually involves a pay increase for the mayor and the commissioners, which is kind of excessive. I read this morning that the state of Ohio is uh, passing legislation for their uh, representatives to take a 3% cut, whereas the city of Dayton is asking voters to allow the commissioners to get a 20% pay increase and the mayor to get a 50%, well, I said 49% pay increase um, by tying their salaries in with the county commissioner rates, which is set by the state. So I'm urging people to vote no on that because uh, they can come back with a better, better solution uh, on those. And there are two that you should vote yes on with regards to the water and being able to participate in meetings remotely if there's an emergency, which they're currently doing. Um, but definitely go GaryGo.com, my blog up in the top right corner, check it out, read it, and vote on it the way you feel we should. Great. One thing that's really a sort of, I'm sort of passionate about is some of the homes here, the, the housing stock here, and they don't build houses like this anymore. They're, you know, and I see so many homes that all they need is just a little TLC. You know, and these could be great homes for people to live in. Correct. Like I, I, you know, I fixed up a couple of houses in my neighborhood, mm -hmm. and we did it right, and we got good, good sales prices for them. So there is definitely a market for a completed, finished product. Um, one of the hassles is, as as the purchaser of a property that I want to fix up and sell for profit, the city won't let me pull the permits. Hmm. I have to pay some contractor to do that. And the reality is, in, in my opinion, it shouldn't matter who pulls the permits as long as the, the job passes inspection or who does the work. Because a lot of the work I'm capable of doing myself, which would make the job more profitable to someone who wants to fix up houses, restore them mm -hmm. and sell them. And I think that's one of the things that we have to look at from, from the, the perspective of a mayor and commissioners is changing that one simple restriction that prevents people from fixing up a lot of this housing stock. I mean, it was put in place probably in the 70s, I, and I understand why it was done. It was done to protect unions, union jobs and things like that. But in the 70s, we didn't have the crisis, the housing crisis that we have now with all the vacant structures. So um, we, need to, we need to adapt our ordinances to the times, and that's one way that we can get houses fixed up. Boy, is that an important thing you just said, because what I feel is that the city is not coming in to the times today to meet the needs of right. the people today. Right. I think we're still stuck in the 80s and, with the ordinances. Um, and we need to, you know, quickly assess what is it going to take to attract people to Dayton and to make people really feel like they want to be here in this city. Uh, we're almost out of time, but I do want to touch upon uh, a little bit more about your campaign, about uh, if people would like to contribute to the campaign, they can go to... GoGaryGo.com and uh, via my blog or the, or the website, there's a, a PayPal link they can, they can contribute. Um, they can, uh, my phone number's public, 937-253-1359. Uh, people have been calling me already, um, so if you wish to call, uh, you can check me out on Facebook. I, I re I, I'm very active on Facebook. I respond to questions. I respond uh, to inquiries. I'm also active on Nextdoor. Um, I do make posts about things if I think that there are uh, irregularities or things are going wrong. I have been very active on Nextdoor about these uh, charter changes. I want people to know that they do have to get out and vote. And the other thing I want people to know is this is a nonpartisan, considered a special election. You are not required to declare for a party in this election. So everybody can vote and they will not be labeled. 
And at the odd year elections, that's always the case. Mm -hmm. We are led to believe that we have to declare for an R party or a D party, and we don't. And by the way, I am the independent candidate for mayor. Mm -hmm. I have no, no party support, no, no affil uh, affiliations with either side, and I'm running again as the independent. I was the independent the first time around, which was a blessing for the city because I had no favors I had to pay back. Lastly, three things that you want citizens to know that you want to accomplish in the next four years if elected? Well, again, I think we have to focus on making it easier for people to fix up the housing stock. I think we have to focus on uh, creating a sense of community through neighborhood association development and growth. And uh, we definitely need to find a way to revitalize our business corridors in the neighborhoods where we have so many empty buildings that were originally for shops and, and, and boutique type, type stores. And uh, you know, I, I have no real say on the education of the children, but I think we can influence the schools to start moving in a direction, and we should inf influence the state to start moving in a vocational direction and an entrepreneurship direction to keep those um, young minds active and being productive in society. Thank you so much for being on the program tonight. Well, thank you, William, for having me. There is more to come on The William Pace Show. Stay with us. The William Pace Show on CATV. Good evening, I'm William Pace. Thanks so much for tuning in The William Pace Show. Tonight, my guest is Jordan Wortham. He is candidate for Dayton City Commission. Thanks for being on the program tonight. Thank you, Mr. Pace, for inviting me. Now tell me, why do you particularly want to run for Dayton City Commission? I love the city of Dayton. I'm born and raised in West Dayton, hmm. son of a Dayton police detective, Dayton Mr. Court judge. Um, I have a numerous family members all, all across Dayton, so I'm really passionate into helping the community and my family. Mm -hmm. um, why I'm running? Because I want change. I think people want change in Dayton, Ohio. Mm -hmm. They're tired. Um, it's outdated, our laws, the normalcy, we are totally regressed in comparison to other cities that are booming. Uh, mm -hmm. The citizens of Dayton are the most talented people I know. Mm -hmm. I, I had the luxury of meeting them as a police officer for seven years growing up in West Dayton. We just need the right leadership. We have the ingredients to be one of the greatest cities in America. We just need the right leadership. Okay, talking about you being a policeman, let's segue to police reform. Do you think that that is needed now? Absolutely. Okay. Police officers want reform. People want reform. I'm the guy for the job. I mm -hmm. understand all facets being young and black. I understand when people uh, have their civil rights violated. I worked um, with the Dayton Police Department proudly and mm -hmm. I understand all dimensions and so mm -hmm. I have um, non-divisive solutions. I'm a big solutions guy, front-facing body cameras. We should have mm -hmm. had that several years ago. Mm -hmm. Exponentially increased minority recruitment from 33,000 to 2 million. Mm -hmm. Demilitarized equipment, grenade launchers, mm -hmm. uh, tanks, 50 mm -hmm. cal weapons that a small city shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. We should scrap it and focus on retention, recruitment, promotion of the community and being more reflective of the community. Mm -hmm. So right now, less than 5% of the Dayton Police Department is black. I'm not mm -hmm. proud of that. I want to change that. Mm -hmm. So you want it to be more balanced than consisting of maybe Latinos or different uh, nationalities and so forth on the force then? Yeah. And secondly, I want uh, civilian oversight boards. It gives the people more power on how they're policed. We can't let police departments police themselves 100%. Mm -hmm. It cascades into catastrophic events mm -hmm. that we mm -hmm. see on the media. So. I want to make it more transparent and more accountable. I want to make the officer's job safer, and mm -hmm. I want to protect the citizen. Tell me, on one of your um, advertisements, I saw, um, I want to represent mm -hmm. the people. So is this more like a call for you, like a passion to just serve people? I'm very passionate in serving people because people serve me and mm -hmm. put me in this luxury where I can sit here and talk to you. Mm -hmm. So I want to pay it forward. I believe that um, I'm a product of Dayton 
and I'm big into representing the people and not parties. Mm -hmm. So I am the only candidate from the commission that's independent. I don't want to be controlled by a party. I want to con be controlled by the majority of Dayton uh, citizens. Well, that is refreshing because I do believe that part of the problems we have today is that it's con money is in the equation. Parties are in the equation. And what is missing, which should not be missing, is uh, servant mm -hmm. leadership. Mm -hmm. How about just getting back to serving the people? You know? to, yeah, to add, off a, add on to that, we need people who don't need the job for this, mm -hmm. but want to get the job done. That's right. huge. Right. Who are, who are willing it to really do what's is. right. Correct. Because for many people who are running uh, for office, it's about a second job or supplementing. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really about the call to mm -hmm. serve people and to he help people to have the best quality of life. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, and you do that well, then other people will notice that. And if you're going to, and maybe represent you for another office. But so many people go into office because they're using the office as a platform to get to somewhere else. And what people are really wanting is to have someone there to help them to have the best quality of life that they possibly can have as a citizen of Dayton. Um, let's talk about, you're also interested in helping to grow the business community here and to uh, help people with, uh, uh, lowering maybe taxes and things like that? I'm, I'm very passionate of, of businesses. I've owned businesses since, since I was 16 years old. I'm a security equity investor. I love business. Big business, small business, entrepreneurs, investors. I love when they take risks. It makes America better. So I want to look at outdated inspections and ordinances mm -hmm. that makes it overly cumbersome for a business or entrepreneur, investor to come here and take risk. I think that's so important because mm -hmm. Uh, though I'm just a few years older than you. Um, I remember as a kid um, in Dayton, the, every thoroughfare, you know, used to have all kinds of shops on it. You know, at Salem Avenue had the Salem uh, dry cleaners and they had a restaurant and they had all kinds of hair salons and they had, uh, we had our own little uh, shopping strip called uh, Miracle, Miracle Lane. And, um, all those things were there, and now when you drive down Salem, it's, it's you know, sometimes I feel like I'm lost because what's the, the landmarks, and I think uh, a community is, uh, is a thriving community of all kinds of businesses, mm -hmm. small, mom and pop business, medium sized business, corporate, you know, that makes for a robust economy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but in the re few remaining minutes, I want to ask you two things. I want to know, uh, we want the viewers to know how they can support you, your platform, and to know more about your platform. Give us your website. JordanWortham.com. They can visit it, they can ask me a question, mm -hmm. I'll respond, and they can make a donation. To the campaign there. Correct. Or if they'd like to be a volunteer, there's... Friends for Wortham Committee, they can contact me. Okay. 1137 Irving. Great. And lastly, in our few remaining moments, I want you to recap and tell the viewers what you would like to do for the city of Dayton. I want to change the game. It's time that we have some fresh blood out there that's willing to be open to new ideas, mm -hmm. to go against the status quo. I think mm -hmm. people are sick and tired and they're hungry for change. Mm. I'm the guy that's willing to put it all on the line. I stand on principle. Mm -hmm. I'm un unafraid, I'm unbossed. I stand mm -hmm. on my principle at all costs. So I'm huge into serving people and doing what's best for the people and not for re-election or to secure my job. Mm -hmm. So I wanna make the city more business friendly. I wanna make the community safer. I, I know how to do it. I'm the only candidate who is a former police officer Mm -hmm. The police officers want my reform package implemented, mm -hmm. and the community wants it. I know exactly how to get it done. The current commission and mayor, they're not reforming the police so much as what they are leading people to believe. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for coming on the program thank tonight. You. There's more to come.
on The William Pace Show. Stay with us. The William Pace Show through the years has been a beacon of light to the Miami Valley and beyond, taking you to such destinations as the Navy Pier, Palmer Hilton Palace Hotel, German Village, Showboat Majestic Theater, Ohio Village, and Crone Conservatory. There is always something cooking in the kitchen mm, on The William Pace Show. Some of the biggest stars and entertainers like B.B. King, Jimmy Walker, Bob Carlyle, Patty Austin, and Mr. T have appeared on The William Pace Show. Tune in The William Pace Show on CATV.